international worship leader, singer, songwriter, teacher, and so much more, Ron Kenoli. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Kenya. Karibu Kenya. What? Karibu Kenya. So it means welcome to Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> this is not your first time in, in Kenya, right? What? You've been in Kenya before? Oh, yes. More times than I can remember. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Now, the journey for you in, in worship music started in the mid-80s, if I'm not wrong. Around no, it started on November 19th, 1975 wow. at 8.30 in the morning. In the 70s, okay. Yes, ma'am. 19, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So, that's many decades. That was when the journey began. Okay. That was when the journey began. It, and over the over a course of years, over a period of time, it evolved mm -hmm. into what it is today. Okay. And it's gone through many paths and and many challenges, many journeys, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, here I am. <laughs> yeah, in, uh, in the mid-90s is when you began your, your own ministry, if I'm correct? No, no. I began my own ministry in September of 1978. Okay. It's just that well, I went eight years and nobody knew who I was. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I became the music pastor at a church in San Jose, California. Mm -hmm in the United States and that was in 1985 uh, right. and then uh, I was there for four years and th my music began to gain popularity around the San Francisco Bay Area and that's when uh, Don Moen who was a representative he was a vice president of Integrity Music in 1989 he came to my church and he uh, asked me if I would pray about being a worship leader on the Hosanna Integrity Music Projects, right. mm -hmm. and, and of course I told him that's something I, d I didn't have to pray about that. I, <laughs> you know, that I just I felt like it was something that I knew, not felt like I knew right. that it was something that the Father wanted me to do. So back to those days when you're being discovered and now you're gaining popularity. What what was that like? Because you said you, your journey started much earlier than that. So, did it matter that it took you that long to gain popularity? In the early years, it did because it was in the first eight years. It was a long period of rejection because I was doing something that other churches was churches were not doing. Uh, praise and worship did not become a legitimate genre of music until the 90s. That's when it began to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And in those early years, yes, it was difficult because uh, I was writing songs that were just directly out of Scripture, okay? And they were not songs of, of uh, going to heaven or songs of, of going up the rough side of the mountain or waiting until, you know, I'm going to see the sweet by and by. No, it weren't songs like that. They were songs about uh, authority of the believer and power in the Spirit and walking in joy and peace and truth and love and that's what my music was about mm -hmm. and uh, it just that and even the the style of the music did not fit into the uh, the general church scene and uh, I had been I had spent almost 10 years in secular music and so the the music that I was writing uh, had Kind of a, I don't want to say worldly flavor, but it was a more sophisticated sound, yeah. flavor than what was being played in the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with uh, you know, music, uh, contemporary gospel music in this day and age has also evolved uh, over the years. Exactly. And, you know, the sound has changed. Ta you know, music now is targeting young people. Sounds much different, I'm sure, than than it did back in your day. Do you have thoughts about the gospel industry as, as it is presently? Oh, yeah, I do. I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> do you want to share some of those thoughts? Well, uh, I have an issue with a lot of contemporary Christian music uh, because a lot of the music does not really... Uh, there's a lot of popular songs that are not in line with Scripture. A lot of hit songs that we sing in church that we don't even think about. We don't listen to the lyrics and we don't line up the lyrics with scripture. 
And there's a lot of songs that are like that, mm -hmm. you know. And, 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 and it's been like that for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Even with our hymns and things, our Savior said in Matthew 28, He said, I will not leave you or forsake you. So why do we sing, pass me not, O gentle Savior? You know, it's like we don't believe Him. Mm. Okay, and the whole Christianity is all, all about believing Him. Okay? Right, right. So why would He ask Him not, not to pass us up? Mm -hmm. We sing a song called, Here I am to worship, Here I am to bow down, Here I am to say that. And then in the back end of the song, it says, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins up on the cross. Just think about it. It cost him his life. That's mm -hmm. how much it costs. Mm -hmm. See, you. when you say that, you, when you say you don't know, then you avoid the whole New Testament. Because the whole New Testament is about what it costs mm -hmm. for us to realize right relationship with our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Now, perhaps you can talk a little bit about the importance of uh, mentorship. To you, I know that you believe quite a bit in, um, you know, empowering other younger people who are coming up, worship leaders coming up. Uh, maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, I, I, I can. I, I'm for several years. It's been a burden on my heart now to deposit some of the things that I've learned over over my years. I, I'm 72 years old now, and uh, the Father has impressed upon my heart that I should not go to the grave without imparting as much as I can about uh, what I've learned, what I've experienced, and uh, to, to just deposit that into younger people. And uh, I've developed a mentoring program called the Academy of Praise and Worship. And it's a, it's a mentoring program for pastors, worship leaders, singers, musicians, anybody who's involved in the praise and worship ministry of their church or parachurch organization. Mm -hmm. Your, some of your children also uh, took after your, your footsteps. So. Oh, absolutely. I'm very <laughs> proud of that. Kenobi fans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my youngest son is um, he's a music pastor at a large church in the Chicago area. It's about 17,000 people, and he's over the music department there. And then uh, my middle son, uh, Ronald, he is... Uh, he's a musician. He has his own group in the in the uh, uh, Orlando area, mm -hmm. the Central Florida area, where mm -hmm. we live now. Must make you very proud to see them and their accomplishments. Extremely proud. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm extremely proud of them. Your beautiful wife is also here. I don't know if she wants to come on camera, but she's here. <laughs> oh yeah, you can shoot the camera over there if you can. We'll meet yeah, her when she, we go to the other side. She, she is here, and this is home for her. This is home for her. Oh yeah. Oh she, wow. She was born in Mombasa and ah. grew up here in Nairobi. Okay. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Now, you know, I'm going to take you back to the years when you did begin uh, your ministry. Did you have the vision that it would be so internationally successful that you'd be able to reach people in all, sort of all corners of the globe as you have? Yes and no. Uh, all my life, all I've ever wanted to do was sing. All my life. I have never wanted to do anything else. And when I was eight years old, excuse me, when I was in the eighth grade, when I was in the eighth grade, I was in uh, Mrs. Gregory's geography class in junior high school, and she had this big map of the world, and at that time, there was 186 nations in the world, and I used to look at that map and daydream in her class about traveling to all of these places. And I can truly say that I have lived my dream. My, my ministry has gone to over 118 nations now. Oh, wow. And our music is marketed in, uh, legitimately marketed in 144 nations of the world. So uh, I've always dreamed about traveling. Uh, all I've ever wanted to do was sing. The good part about all of it is that I get to travel and sing and represent the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's especially good. Yeah. And you're still traveling. You're still singing. Uh, are you still recording as well? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm still recording. In fact, my latest recording was uh, uh, co-written. I wrote songs with... Uh, 
uh, a good friend of mine, is, and he lives here in uh, Nairobi now. His name is David Hunter. Okay. And he was the producer of uh, the latest CD that I've done. It's called Set Apart Is Your Name, Volume 2. And uh, I'm on a quest now to make our Heavenly Father's name known because most of us, uh, most believers, most Christians, uh, we don't know the name of our Heavenly Father. We use the titles God and Lord, and those are not those are not names. Those are titles like doctor, lawyer, president, uh, whatever. That's what they are. And throughout the throughout the scriptures, he challenges us and calls on us to know him by name, to call him by name. In fact, Proverbs chapter thirty, verse four, says, "Who has ascended and descended?" Uh, from the heavens who has gathered the wind in his fist who has bound the sea in a garment who has established the earth and its ends and says what is his name and what is his son's name most believers don't know what his name is or what his son's name mm -hmm. is and when you do uh, additional research when you really are searching for him he allows you to find him mm -hmm. okay and uh so that's what my newest recordings are about. Mm -hmm. It's about the name of our Heavenly Father, the ancient Hebrew name, Yahuwah, and the name of our Savior, our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. How many albums does this make for you now that you're still, <laughs> oh, still churning them out? <laughs> it's about 18. About 18? Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember... Uh, your album was one of the first that I ever had when I was in high school because my parents wouldn't let me listen to any secular music so it was just right? worship music really? in my household so you know it takes me way back uh, so maybe you can talk about what you're in Kenya to do this time I know there is uh, the gospel extravaganza that you'll be uh, performing at so mm -hmm. what can what can people expect to see there they, they expect me to do I hope you expect me to do all of the things that you expect me to do <laughs> oh, okay and that is simply to lead worship I stay in my lane and that is in praise and worship and uh, I expect I expect to accomplish the purpose for praise and worship and that is to experience the manifest presence of our Heavenly Father when we praise Him and when we worship Him appropriately. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's going to be very powerful. I saw you singing along while uh, the bridal choir was singing, and I'm sure there are people who m might not be able to make it to your concert who want to hear you just sing a little something. No, no, because <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Because <laughs> I want you to come out. I want you to come out and see what we do. If you're a believer, the Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. There are people who have spent a lot of money and a lot of work and a lot of effort to bring all of the, the, the believers together in the Nairobi area, okay? And this is a special time, a special time of year when all of us ought to be coming together to worship and praise our Heavenly Father and our Savior. This holiday season is a season when, when we all should put our focus on our Savior together. So we invite you to come out. There's going to be plenty of room, I understand, mm -hmm. at the KICC, right? Right. Oh, okay, so it, there's room enough to hold you. So, <laughs> so come on out. And we will be there. Uh, will the... The bridal, bridal choir will not choir. be there. What's the name of the choir? The bridal choir. The bridal choir. The bridal choir going to be there? <laughs> oh, I am invite, inviting invite you now. <laughs> oh, okay. The bridal choir is going to be... Bridal... Choir. Choir. Yeah. It's going to be... That's an interesting name. You've got to tell me about it. Yeah, but I'll anyway. about that later. <laughs> but anyway, please come. Mm -hmm. Please come and know that you will be blessed. I expect you to come. You expect me to be there. Our Heavenly Father expects us to worship Him and give Him the praise and the worship that He deserves. Mm -hmm. I'll see you there. Amen. 72 years young and uh, you're still traveling and 
spreading the word of God around uh, the world. So we appreciate you for making time for us this morning. We're not done with uh, Ron Canoli yet. Uh, we're actually going to head to our Power Breakfast kitchen where Chef Ali is still standing by to see uh, what some of the final products are from this morning. We'll teach you some of our Kenyan food. Maybe you can cook a little bit. Do you cook? <laughs> <laughs> I cook, but I, I don't do wife? what you cook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll head on over okay. there uh, in just a short while. Right. Uh, stay tuned to Power Breakfast. We invite the Lord to come and ignite us tonight like he ignited the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Set us on fire, Lord, so the world can, can watch us burn for you. Glory to God. A palace of praise, a throne of thanksgiving, made for the King of Kings. Sing out a joyful song, his love go on When praise is abound, his glory surrounds us, building his temple. Father has done. Let's lift up and on. 